In this video, we're looking at how you would add two um, network IP cameras to a switch and in turn connect that to the um, MVR. On the typical MVR, you, you might find some ports on the back, which are PoE ports, which can power the cameras. But in some cases, you might need to install the cameras remotely from the MVR and simply just bring back a, a single connection. So what we're doing here is we're going to connect two cameras to a PoE switch and then from the PoE switch back to the LAN port of the MVR. Um, that means that all the cameras um, will be connected to the PoE switch or several PoE switches as long as all the devices are connected together on that LAN, um, set, on that LAN port you're absolutely fine. I'm using, a, as I say, I'm using a PoE switch. The PoE switch is powering the devices, but in my case, it's also connected to the router. Now, that's going to be useful if later on you want to um, connect, remote connect to your um, system or maybe use an app. The, the router will also enable DHCP if you haven't got a local DHCP server. So that will allow the devices to acquire an address and also tell you in, in advance um, the network addresses that the router is using. So your computer is on the same network uh, as the, um, the network address as the devices. So you can um, browse into them and do any configuration settings. So you can see here, um, it's normal Cat5, Cat6 cable from the switch to the cameras and from the switch to the MVR, again, Cat5, Cat6 cable. And then I'm using a Cat5 cable to plug into my local network connection. In my case, it's a broadband router. Before we start, we must install a hard drive in the machine uh, because that's what it is. It's a video recorder, it's a network video recorder. So what we do is remove the lid from the device and there you will see a space to install your hard drive and you'll see some leads to plug the hard drive in. Simply um, place the hard drive in place. On the back of the unit, you can see some keyhole slots where you screw the hard drive in place. Connect the leads, make sure they're in firmly put the lid back on and then we're ready to go you simply power the device up if you power it up without the hard drive um, working you get several beeps until the hard drive is installed make sure whenever you install in the hard drive the power is off so we're going to launch SADP and with that running, as you can see on the screen here, as soon as it starts up, it finds any devices on the network and it's found our MVR straight away. The status is inactive and there's its IP address. So what we can do here is click on this window here and assign it a new password. I'd strongly recommend you assign all new devices the same password. It makes life a lot much easier than trying to remember what password is to do for this and so on. So let's give this one a password. Confirm the password. Uh, channel password. And then activate. Next, it asks you how to recover your password if you lose it. Um, there's three options. GU, um, the GUI, the GUI ID, you can do it through the on-screen display. Um, then you can do it through um, password prompts, where it reminds you what your password is, or you can do it on a email reset, so it will email you email over to you. So I'll choose um, the email address here, type that in, and then once that's done, I'll uh, click on confirm. Next, we need to look at our IP address. The um, IP address of this computer needs to be the same address as the devices because we're going to browse into them. So type in CMD on your taskbar. It will start the command prompt window. Type in IP config, and at the bottom there, you can see the IP address of this machine here. We need to make sure that all the devices we add are on the same network address, they're on the 192.168.1. Um, address. The last three digits of the addresses are the uh, is the unique address of each device. They all have to be separate addresses so we can browse into them. So 
So back into SADP, at the top there, um, I'm going to switch enable DHCP off. We don't want it um, acquiring a new address if it powers down and powers back up. So we'll leave that as, as is. IP address, as you remember, 192.168.1, that's the constant. It's got its own unique address here, 96, so we can leave that as it is. In our case, that's fine. Um, the rest of the information, the ports, the um, subnet mess, gateway, and IPv6, that's all fine. We can leave that a, a, as it is already. Um, we, we know that information is fine. Um, we know it's working. Um, if you remember on my quick screenshot, my router is IPv6 enabled. If yours isn't, it will come up with um, colon marks. It doesn't really matter if they're enabled or not. Let's enable that by typing in the password, click on modify, and then that shows that the devices are configured and ready to go. Um, next, we can browse into them. So with the device configured, what we can do now is go onto this here and just double click. It will open up your browser. I'll close this one here. It will open up your browser and you can log in to your device. Password is admin admin and the password is your password that you just set in SADP. So what we can do is go to configuration and just do a little bit of configuration before we start. Um, device name, this is the name that will appear on the network if you're doing your network scan so I'll leave that as it is. Device is fine, you can't change these settings, there's no point in changing any of them. Um, time settings, Synchronize it with your computer. Makes life so much easier. Um, save that. Now it's important you synchronize all the devices at the same time. Um, so that's saved. Now we need to add the cameras. So if we go back to SADP, what I've done, I've just added, I've just plugged um, two cameras in um, into the switch. And I've, in the same procedure as um, initializing the MVR, I've added two devices, I've added two cameras. Um, you can see here, camera two, and I'm going to do one at a time. So this is camera 2002, and there's its IP address, it's 32 ports, and everything else the same. You'll notice no IPv6 address this time. As I said before, it doesn't really um, make any difference, really, in, in this instance. Um, DHCP is switched off, and, that, and that's the best way to do it. And, it. and it's much the same for camera 2, which um, is identical, really. The only difference is the IP address. You can't have devices with the same IP address, otherwise they'll just over talk over each other, and you'll get one that's coming and going, or you'll get one that never comes online, um, or you'll get neither of them coming up. depends on the speed of your network. So with, the, with that in mind, we've added our two cameras, 31 and 32. 192.168.1 being the constant throughout of this small network. Um, 31 being camera 1, 32 being camera 2. If we go back to SAD, if we go back to um, Windows Explorer, and this time we're going to go to camera management, then to IP camera, camera 1, just put your mouse over there and click camera 1. Then go to modify, and then at the bottom there, plug and play, change that from plug and play to manual. And then at the top, we need to change the IP address for camera 1. And if you remember, the constant is 192.168.1, and camera 1 was 31. It's a height vision camera, port 8000, channel 1, admin, you get to conf put the new password in that we created in SADP. I'll do that twice. Making a hash of this one. Try that again. Okay. Protocol adding method is manual. Click OK. Then we'll do the same for camera two. Modify, then to camera 2, 
click on modify change plug and play to manual change this address remember the constant was 192 so one and then the address of the camera which is 32 it's height vision passwords make sure you put them in the right order this time Click OK. At the bottom there, save succeeded. And that's both cameras added now, um, camera one and camera two. Um, you can see while I was working away, it's, um, it's done some work. It's assigned the, it's decided that the password that I created was a strong password and it's online. This one's same risk. It's just because we've not navigated away. If we navigate away, just go to POE channel, for instance, and then come back. You can see it's now strong it's accepted it's communicated and it's realized it's a, it's a working device if we just navigate to um, live view and then at the bottom so actually before I do that you'll notice here now camera one and camera two they're dark Bef before they're a little bit grayed out the dark shown that they're active and at the bottom we can just click on start all and it should bring both cameras up um, they're both very near close to each other, these cameras, as you can see. Um, this one is looking at a Net2 controller, an access controller, and the Bell SPA panel. And this one's the same view, but upside down. What we can do now is go back to configuration. Go to image. And we want to change the OSD, the on-screen display. So for camera one, you can see at the bottom here, it says camera one. Do we want to change that? Why not? Let's change it to Net2. Because it's the view of the Net2 camera. Do we want to display the name? Yes. The date and the, and the week. If not, you can just switch it off. You see the, the fields disappear, but we'll, we'll leave the name on. Um, time format there, click on save. And then pull down menu, and this time D2, camera 2. Um, and we will change that one to up. And save, because it's upside down. And that's how we name the cameras. With all that done, we've now got a working system. So at the beginning, we installed the hard drive, powered the machine up, connected it to our switch um, for, first of all, for the cameras to connect on the LAN port on the back of the machine, and also connected that switch to the um, local network connection, whether it's uh, a business or at a house. Uh, in my case, I used a broadband connection. The um, device was then assigned an IP address. And we gave the cameras an IP address, discussed which ranges are going to be going on and why you put them all in the same range. Then we added the cameras to the MVR, gave the cameras a name, and there we go. That's the system set up and ready to go. Thanks very much for watching. All the products mentioned in this training video can be found on our website. Links are below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much.